Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for a discussion of a very important topic which is the newest WordPress trends for freelancers and agencies going into 2021. Our guest today is Alex Young who is an experienced software engineer and creator of WPCAST's YouTube channel where he discusses a lot of topics about software engineering, WordPress and shares career advice. So don't forget to check out his channel and make sure to subscribe to 10Web's YouTube channel for more content about WordPress. This video is brought to you by 10Web, automated WordPress platform specifically designed for agencies. Sign up for a 14-day free trial right now and experience the true innovation. Hey Alex, thank you for accepting our invitation. That's good to be here. Happy to do it. To start things off, I'd like to begin our discussion by kind of doing a recap of everything that happened to WordPress in 2020. So what do you think are the most significant changes that will stay with us throughout 2021 as well? Um, good. I, I'd, I'd like to kind of start off by talking a little bit about, well, everybody started kind of working from home here in 2021 and Automatic, the creators of WordPress, they, they've been fully remote the, the entire time. So they had already a very decentralized team. And, and I think that one of the coolest things that happened was that, I mean, they got to stay fully remote and were able to kind of show that that works. And so a lot of companies like the one that I work for were able to kind of follow that example and, and kind of understand the benefits of, of having more of a decentralized team across many time zones. Um, so I thought that was a pretty cool one. And I mean, it was, it immediately impacted my work life. So I would say that that was a, a pretty nice one. Um, they also came out with a handful of, you know, just releases and things like that. I mean, Gutenberg came back out. I think 5.0 was back in, I think, late, like mid to late 2019, something like that. Um, so 2020 was mostly trying to, I think, uh, mitigate a lot of the the, the comments that uh, they were getting for about Gutenberg. Gutenberg wasn't extremely well received by many developers. And so I think, you know, 5.4, 5, 6, all that kind of stuff. That was a lot of, you know, introducing some new blocks and 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 making it so that, you know, some of the bugs and documentations were added or fixed and, and updated, things like that. They also had some kind of like cool stuff like block search. Like you could, if you're like searching for a block and you don't have it, like a little pop-up will show up and, and introduce like, oh, this is, might be the block you're looking for. It's by this author. They've got this many plugins on the, on the, on the, uh, the repository and, and they have, uh, oh, you know, this average rating. I, I don't know, some cool little like updates here and there. I thought it was pretty impactful. Yeah, those are some very interesting points as you mentioned COVID-19 changed the life as we know it and also the Gutenberg updates but how do you think those two main changes impacted freelancers and agencies specifically? Um, well I think that it, it kind of um, shed a little bit more light on on uh, who you can work with with WordPress um, agencies and freelancers are are pretty prominent in like the WordPress space. It's a, an awesome tool for that kind of stuff. And once people started working remotely a little bit more, like pe maybe people started to question their relationships with cu their currently established partners and maybe were like, oh, maybe I wonder if I can get this done by somebody online. Um, and time zone doesn't really matter as much. You don't have to have as many in-person meetings. So like finding an agency or, or, or somebody who's close to you, like physically, um, isn't as important and people are kind of taking those steps into the virtual space a little bit more. And I think that, you know, working fully remotely definitely opened up that possibility to freelancers and agencies a lot more. And just like general, I think trust in Gutenberg has gotten a little bit higher, especially through 2020, just fixing bugs, adding documentation, things like that have all kind of, I think, kept um, certain agencies and certain freelancers from, you know, you know, taking those first steps into um, Gutenberg and things like that. So the more that they kind of iterate on Gutenberg, I think the more uh, widely adopted it'll, it'll come and it'll become more of a de facto um, tool for, for freelancers and agencies. And uh, do you think these changes will still be valid in 2021? Uh, yeah, I think that, I mean, especially kind of the stuff that they have slated for 2021, like like full site editing and things like that. I mean, those are the kind of pieces that other 
solutions already have on on Gutenberg. Like, for example, like you, if you can't edit headers and footers in Gutenberg currently, or sidebars, or you know all these other places that you could have designated in something like Elementor, for example, or 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 Divi, I guess. Like these are things that these other third-party plugins have already done, and so therefore it's just easier to go down that route. And so I think as they continue to iterate on Gutenberg, add in full site editing and things like that, like the, it's gonna become more of a thing in 2021, just like it was more of a thing in 2020. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you that this kind of opened new opportunities for freelancers and agencies to work with international clients and why not for freelancers to work inside those agencies. So uh, to continue our discussion about WordPress, so even though 35% of all websites in the world are based on WordPress, there are still many people who think it's better to go custom code for all kinds of websites. So this is why I'm kind of curious that you are a software engineer. So why did you select WordPress to be the protagonist of your videos in your channel? I think kind of WordPress chose me more than I chose it, um, to be honest. Uh, I mean, that's where kind of like I kind of um, jumped into my first agency back in, oh, I think 2012, 2013, somewhere around in there. And um, we had a lot of clients that uh, existed on WordPress currently. So I had to work with it. I had to learn how it how what WordPress was and what we could do with it. And so the further the demands of our clients became the further I had to push WordPress. And I, I, I eventually came to the realization that it can do most of what I want, if not everything. So um, I kind of, you know, uh, really kind of became enamored with WordPress and, and, uh, and every subsequent job that I've had has, has touched on WordPress quite a bit. And so, and these are, you know, mom and pop shops that, you know, have like a small little WooCommerce store to these, you know, enterprise um, companies that I've, I'm, I, and the one that I'm currently working at, where we have, you know, millions upon millions of visitors every month. And, you know, we're having WordPress handle that and we're having to do very complicated things with WordPress. And so far it's taken just about everything that we've thrown at it. And so when I started to, um, you know, evangelize WordPress on my channel and, and make a, I mean, make a channel dedicated to WordPress development. It was essentially digesting everything that I've learned into video format. And um, I think there's um, a lot of things that are just kind of misunderstood about WordPress, about what you can do and, and how you could take advantage of it. And me kind of having touched on all the different facets from freelancing to small mom and pop shops to enterprise levels of WordPress. I felt like it would be good to kind of showcase those um, topics a little bit more in depth and how you could learn them yourself and implement them on your own. From a perspective of a WordPress fan, that's actually really great to hear. And especially the fact that you mentioned reliability and that you have worked with websites that had uh, huge amounts of traffic and that the reliability of WordPress actually may be the reason why so many clients came to you and asked to work on WordPress, because as we already know, that's a crucial factor for them. Yeah. I mean, well, the, one of the main things is that, I mean, if you look at it from both angles, if you look at it from an agency standpoint or a freelancer standpoint, which are kind of the same, just, you know, uh, size, I would say, but um, you can, you can turn around a WordPress site very quickly and usually agencies handle um, clients on a budget. Um, at least when, when it comes to local clients and things like that. So you can, you can get a very good site out very quickly with WordPress. And on the other hand, on the larger enterprise uh, sites as well, um, it, it can handle the scale of, uh, of the needs of, of a large enterprise company, like new sites and things like that, where you're pumping out hundreds of posts a month, things like that. You can definitely do that with WordPress. And, you know, it's a, it's an interface that most content creators understand, most writers, most editors. So it's, it's a very easy thing to train people on. So I think, like you said, there's lots of, uh, it's very scalable. It's very adaptable um, to the needs of your project, whether it's large or small. So it's very, Good, good reason why it's popular. 
Yeah, and uh, we talked why WordPress is popular, um, but uh, the competitors of WordPress are not staying at their places and are developing as well. So how do you think WordPress compares to Wix, Webflow or other website builders uh, currently? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's it's it's competition for a reason. I mean, I mean, Wix and Squarespace, Webflow, they all have something very valid to offer. Um, with WordPress, there is a learning curve. I mean, right out of the gate. I mean, you can install it. You can create a Bluehost account or a GoDaddy account, click install WordPress, and then you're just kind of left like, OK, what next? Um, whereas, you know, these other platforms walk you through, they have lots of videos. There's not really much variance between the interfaces that you would experience on Wix and Squarespace versus what you could, you know, log in and see on a WordPress site. It's going to be a very different experience if you're somebody who has worked with something like, you know, Divi and then you jump into Elementor or something like Gutenberg it's it's different and so it's hard to kind of tailor your your education around something that you may not know how to work so these uh companies uh, like wix and squarespace definitely have that advantage they have the platform that they're making there's not really much deviation from that platform and so they can educate and guide people through and just lower that barrier to entry um, whereas WordPress has us that slightly higher barrier to entry that I think will, I think it'll get smoother over time as they fill out Gutenberg and, and make education materials and kind of guided uh, tutorials through Gutenberg and things like that. But, um, and then from like a, like a developer standpoint, working with Wix and Squarespace is not fun. <laughs> so like, yeah, I think that one's going to be a hard hurdle for, for Wix and Squarespace to overcome as far as developer acceptance things like that. It's very much for, you know, the the business owner who just needs something and they want to be able to edit some text and, and whatnot. But, uh, you know, things like Webflow and stuff, that's essentially turning into like Photoshop for web development. It's, it's pretty awesome. Um, I think that as Gutenberg gets larger, I think that's kind of what they're going to try and end up with, just a little bit more of like a streamlined version of it so it's not so overwhelming because even me as a developer looking at webflow it is <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty crazy what they what all the buttons and all the interface items that they have it, it's it can be overwhelming and so i think wordpress is going to find itself kind of in that happy medium where you can have customizability through you know contracting through developers adding plugins and whatnot um, but also have an easy to use interface that isn't overwhelming and you can still accomplish quite a bit. Yeah, it's true. It's very hard to compete with the flexibility that WordPress offers, and especially if you have those development skills that you mentioned. And uh, another topic that always pops up when people are discussing WordPress is the website speed. So the importance of website speed has, speed has been discussed many, many times and everyone knows that if your website doesn't load quickly enough, you'd lose a bunch of your traffic. So uh, how do you think WordPress performs if we take the website speed into consideration? Yeah, um, there's a quote that I got from a really terrible movie like years ago and, it's, and, it, and he said that bad dogs aren't born, they're made. And so I think that's kind of what WordPress is, is like WordPress is not a bad dog. It can go fast. It, it can do what you need it to do. The only time that it becomes slow and sluggish is when we make it that way. And a lack of education on what exactly makes a WordPress site slow is no different than, I mean, the education you would need to make any site slow, like, or to know about how a site becomes slow, regardless of platform. So. I think that WordPress out of the box, you throw in, I mean, Gutenberg is running, you can make an incredibly fast site and it's getting faster. Like they're adding in, you know, image lazy loading and here in 2021, they're gonna add like iframe lazy loading. So like YouTube videos and other third-party tools aren't gonna slow down the site like it would normally. So they're taking steps to make it even faster and kind of catching up to what a developer would just do for a custom site. Um, so I see that problem getting less over time and it's going to make it harder to uh, make it slow on your own um, with all of these kind of safety nets in there. Um, 
but overall, I think WordPress can be just as fast as, as most other sites. Obviously, WordPress has some overhead that it just can't get rid of. So it, it is going to have a natural disadvantage because it has WordPress core that it's got to do all of its uh, logic through, but that you can just avoid if you were to build something from scratch. So there's never really going to be that, that exact par um, um, comparison. But as far as other CMSs go, I think it does a, a fairly good job. Um, but like I said, there's you can you can take a, a a good regular site and make it really slow. You can take a really slow site and you can do a lot of things to optimize it as well. It just takes a little bit of know-how about how to get it working under the hood with WordPress. So um, there's lots of plugins that like you know I like to talk about WP Rocket a lot on my channel because that's a really good caching plugin. You can throw those on there. Um, it'll minify concatenate scripts, minimize images, and you know, create static HTML versions of your pages to really speed up the how it serves your content. Um, and then all the things that a developer could do if you're doing API calls and whatnot. There's a lot of things that, that you can do to make it um, fast. And I really only think WordPress gets that, that reputation is because you have somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing. They install as many plugins as, as they want and you, they deal with the consequences and ask why, <laughs> why this is happening to them. And so it's, it's kind of the bed that they made, so they got to sleep in it. So, but it, it's not very obvious, like every time that you install a plugin, what exactly you're doing, that those resources have to come from somewhere. So um, uh, overall, I think it's good, but it does get its reputation. Um, but it's not necessarily WordPress's fault either. Yeah, page speed optimization and loading speed is also something we at TimeWeb value a lot. Uh, but what sometimes people forget is that it's not just the developer uh, or the theme. Uh, it, it also depends a lot on uh, on the hosting, on image optimization and some other factors. And this is what we are tirelessly working to provide our clients. So 2021 already kicked off with the first WordPress update of the year, Simon, uh, and I'm pretty sure there will be more throughout the year. Uh, so what do you think will change mostly during the year? Well, I think that um, if I, I, it's been a minute since I watched the state of the word, but um, I think that one of the major ones is, is all about full site editing. I think that's going to be a really big um, uh update because right now like i think we talked about it just a minute ago is that with these other plugins like you know elementor and and divi and and um, oxygen things like that they just kind of have the market cornered when it comes to just being able to do anything you want to your site it's um it's a really interesting kind of dilemma it's because i mean wordpress has um it's always kind of like it feels like a little like a couple steps behind some of these other third party party plugins when it comes to that so if they can really accelerate get a lot of these bugs out of gutenberg that um that they've been wanting to that's on their their roadmap there's like a major milestone on their roadmap is just eliminate all of these bugs that they're seeing inside of gutenberg and there's thousands upon thousands of them and so if they can get that out of the way and get onto full site editing, I think that's going to be huge. And I think that'll really put them in a competing place with some of these other plugins like Elementor, like I said. So if they focus on that and they get that out of the, uh, knock that out of the park, I mean, I'd be a pretty happy, happy camper when it comes to all that. So do you think all of these updates and new changes make the work for free freelancers and agencies uh, easier? or on the contrary, making, keeping up with everything harder and harder? I think this has been overall good. Um, obviously, like there's a lot of developers, myself included, who are a little bit more pessimistic about Gutenberg compared to some of the other tools that we've worked with. But if they can kind of get these things going, like it's going to be a lot more viable for freelancers to, to take advantage of and have like a more scalable piece like the big thing is um the the data storage in gutenberg right now if they can even fix that that would be that would be huge and make it way more accessible to developers to even use it in like a headless format like i i do freelance projects where headless wordpress is the thing that i use and um i can't use gutenberg in a, in a reasonable way so if they were to able able to fix that that would be awesome um 
But overall, I think as they start adding these new blocks, like they're saying they're going to add, add some of these performance items right out of the box, like lazy loading and, and um, oh, they even have like a HTTPS detection. So if like yours, you have content that's not on HTTPS and you can, it'll just fix it for you. Like all these things are good. Um, I guess my question is, will it be enough to kind of keep up with some of the other things? So you just mentioned about other third party companies that affect the development of WordPress. And I mean like plugin development companies, hosting websites. And what do you think will be some changes driven by them in 2021 as compared to the official WordPress updates? Yeah, good question. Um, I think there's a lot going on kind of outside of WordPress core that's really, um, really uh, encouraging. Um, one of which was uh, uh, WP Engine just hired the developer who made WP GraphQL um, and are investing into headless WordPress and having such like a juggernaut like uh, WP Engine, literally paying for somebody to work on WP GraphQL and, uh, and, and, and bring it to, uh, give it the attention that it deserves and things like that is huge. Um, there's that because that is pretty much the gateway for a lot of us developers to work with headless WordPress in a reasonable way. Um, and so that alone and giving that kind of investment, I think is really encouraging, um, particularly by WP Engine. So shout out to them on that. Um, and then like places like Kinsta, they just released their dev Kinsta tool, which is like local by flywheels kind of equivalent or its competitor, where the local platform that we use to develop WordPress sites is being heavily invested in by multiple companies now. And it makes it easy to deploy sites to their platform, obviously, and you can just use it just on your own as well. So it really is beneficial to the community, as well as makes it really easy to do one of the worst parts about WordPress development, which is deploying all of your stuff up to a server and having to go through all of that garbage sometimes is a headache. So I think that there's a lot of good things happening um, outside of there as well. Elementor got a bunch of, of funding and I think they're gonna dump a lot of that into their product and making it available to more people, ha having more components, things like that. Um, there's a lot of good things that are happening around the WordPress community and WordPress is just growing. And so it's a great place for other new tech and other new companies to come in and take advantage of of this large community. Uh, I think quite a bit of, uh, of, of support behind headless WordPress, particularly in the, in the WordPress development community. Um, it's definitely one of more, my more popular videos. So I think people are really interested in that topic. Um, there's huge investments going from uh, companies like WP Engine, but uh, what, it, what it really is, is essentially um, is the ability to kind of have WordPress manage your content kind of, that's where CMS comes from, content management system. It literally just manages your content um, and WordPress currently makes it so it will manage the content and it will also display the content. And what uh, headless WordPress means, it decouples those two pieces of your site. So you have your content, which is all managed in WordPress. You log into WordPress, you create a blog post or whatever, you hit save, it saves it to the database. And then the other side of that would be the front end and that can be whatever tool you want, which could be most popularly is Re React or like things like Gatsby or Next or, or whatever. And then that reads from an API, that content you just saved and displays it using another language like JavaScript. So it decouples your content from your rendering. And so you can essentially feed that content to multiple sources, including like um, a mobile app or something like that. So if you run a news site and people download your news sites app, you can read that content in a native format on your phone, or you can look at it on the web and you can read that uh, content in kind of a more native experience there as well. So it really makes it so your content is much more easy to digest and you can build out things in a way that are shareable between the two places. So I think it's a, a really awesome thing that is, is happening. I think it's gonna become much more of a thing, particularly on the more um, enterprise levels and kind of larger project side of WordPress. Um, I think it'll be a while before you see like smaller sites using it um, effectively, but I think over time there's going to be more plugins that um, 
that support a headless environment. So thanks a lot, Alex, for explaining what headless WordPress is. And now I would like to talk about another change that has been basically changing the whole world as we know, which is AI. So how do you think artificial intelligence is going to impact design and development of websites? Yeah, I think that there's um, quite a few possibilities there. I mean, um, and the more the merrier when it comes to AI and how we can accept it into the into the development community because ultimately our goal is to make our jobs easier so we can work on more complicated things. And the more things that AI can handle for us, the better. Um, we're already starting to see some stuff like that when it comes to like searching, um, content suggestions. So like you scroll down to the bottom of your post and there's, um, you know, related posts and things like that. AI can have that happen for us and suggest content that's going to keep the user on the site or stuff that's more relevant to them. Um, other things like chat as well is also very AI driven. Um, when it comes to like design and development, I think that's a pretty interesting kind of um, thought experiment because you could theoretically see like design um, imperfections and have AI correct for those as well. So like if you have like a common component that lives on multiple pages and it can detect that there's not enough padding on one of the components or something like that, or the hex color is off, it could theoretically like correct those things for you or or things like that and kind of massage your site into something that it's actually supposed to be like. Um, I think there's a lot of potential there. I think that'd be really cool to kind of see that happen and see it evolve. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of opportunity and, and, and I welcome our new robot over overlords. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of AI as well, simply because it makes our work so much easier. And I hope AI overlords will not take over our world during our generation, at least. Um, and also, actually, this is something that we, we value a lot at TenWeb, and we have recently launched our uh, artificial intelligence website builder, and uh, which helps companies or people to recreate the websites and then edit them uh, in, directly inside WordPress. Um, so yeah, we are hoping AI will facilitate the work of freelancers and agencies. Yeah, definitely. I think it's got a, a uh, it'll have a place for sure. Um, ultimately, we have any new technology, it's there to make our lives easier. So, as so we can work on harder things. So I I, I welcome it. I, I hope that it um, gets there fast, so we can we can keep progressing. What tips do you have for freelancers to focus on in twenty twenty one? Some tips for freelancers and agencies in twenty twenty one. I would say um, finding out about, you know, I've, I, I'm really like a strong supporter of headless WordPress. I think it really has a really strong, um, I think it has a really large uh, opportunity for a lot of us to be able to really make our sites scalable and things like that. Um, learning how uh, Gutenberg works underneath the hood, it's, I mean, WordPress core has I mean, the word automatic has really invested in it. And I think it's it's here to stay, obviously. And so throughout your time, whether you build custom sites from scratch or you inherit new sites, you're probably going to touch Gutenberg quite a bit. And so learning really what's under the hood there is probably going to be a really good thing to learn, um, especially once full site editing comes out, because now it's not just the, the content. All of a sudden, it's the header, the footer, the sidebar, and everything, everything full site editing really. So I would say that um, performance, another big one, making sure that you learn everything that you know there is to know about performance because um, a lot of businesses live and die on, on their ability to rank for pages and um, speed and the core web vitals that Google puts out are huge. And it, it, sometimes it's an uphill battle with uh, WordPress sites that have lots of plugins or, or things like that. So really being able to know the limits of, of um, what you have to work with and the ability to uh, compensate for those with the code that you write. So learning really about what you're being measured against um, and how you can implement fixes inside of WordPress would be, uh, I think, another really big thing. Um, but yeah, I think those are some some pretty good ones to start off with. 
if it's not a secret, how do you discover those tips and tricks? Yeah, so I mean, Google puts out, they have a, an awesome YouTube channel um, for web developers and uh, they go over this stuff extremely in detail. Um, and that's where I honestly get all of my news about it is they have blogs and videos where they just go over all of the things that you're being measured against. And it changes semi-frequently. Um, you'll notice that in Lighthouse and PageSpeed Insights and other things, the metrics are actually shifting because there's just things that they've noticed over time. Like the, the classic example that I like to look at is, is recipe websites. You load up a recipe website and it is a madhouse and as far as like what um, all the things that are happening, all the, the content that is shifting down the page and all this kind of stuff. It, but it's, it's ranked number one with all of these terrible user experiences built right into it. And I think Google is trying to compensate for that by adding you know the cumulative layout shift metric and things like that to make it so you're not jumping all around the page as like ads pop in and videos load in, things like that. So I would, I would strongly suggest looking at their, their, um, their blog and their YouTube channel, because that, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great source of information on knowing like what to, to, to be able to look for on your site. So thanks a lot, Alex, for this great discussion. It was amazing. And I'm sure everyone alongside me, we have all learned something new and we are more prepared right now for the upcoming year in WordPress. But before ending this interview, I have prepared some Blitz questions and I would love to hear your answers to them. Okay. I don't think so, but we'll try anyway. <laughs> Dark mode or light mode? Dark mode for sure. Yes or no? Can artificial intelligence replace developers? That's a trick question. No, they're not going to replace developers, but they're going to take over pieces of stuff that we we won't have to do anymore. Cool. Elon uh, Musk or Steve Jobs? Ooh, uh, probably Elon Musk. Okay. So high saturation versus minimalistic design. What do you prefer? I prefer minimalistic design. I'm actually colorblind, so I, I can't deal with a lot of, you know, colors and stuff like that. So a simple design with, you know, black and white, I'm all for it. What do you think is the correct way of saying it? IT or tech? I say IT. I, I don't know, but uh, that's that's personal preference. I just say IT. Yeah, that's kind of a global discussion on the net on which one is the better printed. I, I don't know, but uh, that's that's personal preference. I just say IT. And the last question, back to the future or Rick and Morty? Ooh, I'll say Rick and Morty up to like season two or three. And then, uh, the, but yeah, back to the future is a very close second on that. Perfect. Thank you, Alex, one more time for joining us and for this amazing interview. It was really great and I'm sure we have all learned a lot. So just to sum things up, what would be the best way for our viewers to contact you? Yeah, uh, like you mentioned, the YouTube channel, I, I try and post videos there once a week on WordPress topics. Um, uh, the next best place to, to get in touch with me uh, personally would be on Twitter. It's at Alexander B. Young. Um, and uh, email is a very distant third. <laughs> uh, I, I, I have a hard time checking my email, but I mean, Twitter, I get the notifications right to me. So if you ever have questions on WordPress or want to chat or you know do a video together, happy to do it. Just uh, reach out to me on Twitter. Great. So thank you, Alex, for your time. It was nice talking to you. This video is brought to you by TenWeb, automated WordPress platform specifically designed for agencies. Sign up for a 14-day free trial right now and experience the true innovation.